Our laboratory uh, over the years, yeah, I've started into this in the, in the 80s actually, uh, has been working on, on patho bacterial pathogens, uh, mostly on Shigella, and uh, we were interested in figuring out how a microbe that causes uh, enteric infections, uh, bloody diarrhea, was actually able to invade the mucosa uh, in the gut and, and, and cause this, uh, you know, inflammation that is characteristic of the disease. It's a disease that is prevalent in very young children in developing countries. So we've been interested in developing models to study the mechanisms, uh, how the microbes talk to the cells, how the cells talk to the microbes, and how it goes. You know. uh, sort of tracking the bacterium on its journey uh, into the, the, the tissues. Uh, so that has been uh, sort of what I would call a multidisciplinary approach. At the same time, we've been helped by you know, developments in imaging technologies, in uh, you know, genome sequencing, and so, you know, that has sort of built up this concept of, of cellular microbiology, which is to study molecular crosstalks between microbes and, and host humans, or rather animal experimental models. So that, that's been until uh, about 10, 15 years ago, and then I, I realized that um, the world is not only one microbe, one host, or one organ, but it's more a global population of microbes which is in interaction with us, and in the middle of it sometimes there is a pathogen, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. So we became inter increasingly interested in, in this, what's now called the microbiota, or the microbiome, in the gut, of course, because this remains our organ of choice and in, in a way trying to figure out two things uh, in the same lab which is actually interesting uh, on the one hand we have the homeostasis the physiology the normal life which is how do we live in good you know basically behavior with the microbes uh, and how do we sense them how do we tolerate them uh, what is their function and, and, and at the same time, how all this very nice, you know, living together uh, can be disrupted by the eruption of a, a pathogenic microbe. Because I'm French, I, I used to call it men, the ménage à trois. So you have the, you know, the host, the pathogen and the microbiota. And you see uh, how they, they, they operate together for, for the best and for the worst. Uh, so that, that, that's the, 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 the idea in general. But you know, it's easy to say, but it's more complicated to address it in uh, experimental terms. So with time, we got more and more interested into uh, a part of the intestinal tract, which is called the intestinal crypt. And these are in the small intestine, in the large intestine. Uh, there are these uh, areas that are, you know, appended to the gut surface, uh, in which the, the, the epithelium is Repair, restituted because you know there, there are stem cells and from these stem cells the cells proliferate and differentiate and in a way the, the, the lifespan of an intestinal cell is about two days so they, 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 they are born in the crypt and then they go up 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 this crypt and they go outside on the surface of the intestine and they die you know meanwhile they do all their functions of the so I thought it was interesting to look at the, the role of the microbiota because this very sophisticated apparatus of epithelial regeneration is in direct contact with microbes, whether they are these commensal microbiome members or, or, or the pathogens themselves. So we are more and more into trying to decipher the mechanisms that you know, lead to pathological effects in this crypt for some microbes, including Shigella, which clearly gets into this, these crypts and, and a, a, a microbiota that we have called crypt-specific core microbiota, which is a, a group of, of, of microbes which are living there permanently and that we would like to consider to be the gatekeepers of, of the crypt, the protectors of the crypt by that function of you know, maintaining inflammation at very low level, by protecting against invasion by other microbes, and also probably by, or at least hopefully, because it would be a, a very novel angle of, um, in terms of finding a new symbiosis, protecting the stem cells against what we call genotoxic stress by, you know, 
components that induce uh, DNA breaks and so and this links with uh, cancer for instance and we are very much into colon, colon cancer now. Yeah, I think we're, I've opened different lines, maybe too, too many. <laughs> Some people in my lab would say uh, we, we are still interested in Shigella. Uh, but I decided to focus on the mechanisms of immune subversion by Shigella. Shigella causes massive inflammation, causes an immune response. So how does it handle this uh, in terms of its own survival? Because we all wish to survive. So Shigella has this outstanding capacity to manipulate the host immune system and we are interested in the effectors, the microbial effectors that do this, not only for the sake of, of basic research, but also because it has an impact on understanding how to better immunize against shigellosis, but also because these bacteria are so smart by the effect of coevolution that they, they have invented mechanisms uh, that we don't even know about. Uh, and so some of these effectors and, 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 and pathways that are affected by these uh, bacterial products uh, they might become interesting uh, targets and, and tools for you know, immunomanipulation, uh, anti-infectious drug discovery, anti-inflammatory drug and so on and so forth. And at the same time we will expand on, the, on, the, on this uh, microbiota and then CRIP specific core microbiota. We are sequencing the genomes and then looking for genes that are important in this interaction. I'm delighted, sir. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I, I, I must say that. I say that this morning. I'm uh, always been, uh, you know, a big fan of uh, British science. Uh, you know, I was elected to the Royal Society uh, two years ago, which is, has been one of the best moments in my scientific life. Uh, when you look at this charter book and you see the names, I mean, it's just amazing. So I'm, 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 I've always felt well here and I have lots of good colleagues and uh, so getting the medal is, it goes straight to my heart.